If you've ever played Pokemon before, then you may have noticed these little things called types. Each type has its own strengths and weaknesses, most of which are logical setups. Fire-type Pokemon are weak against water-type Pokemon. Ice-type Pokemon are weak against fire-type Pokemon. Water-type Pokemon are weak against electric. <sighs> this is the same intro as the Kingdom Hearts video. Types are an important part of Pokemon, and some are better than others. So that's why today I'll be ranking each and every type from worst to best. I'll be basing these rankings off of stats, Pokemon, moves, designs, and pretty much anything else I can think of. And remember, this is just my stupid opinion. Each type has its own uses in battle. So, without further delay, let's Pokemon go! End me. The rock type can be simply described as tough, straightforward, and easily destroyed by foliage. The rock type is my least favorite type for a few reasons. The rock type tends to forget that special stats exist, so its physical strength is pretty substantial, but it has two key weaknesses to special types that completely ruin it. Also, the rock type's moveset makes me sad. There are only 16 rock type moves total. The fairy type has more, and it's only existed since 2013. And of those 16 moves, there are only three that are really viable. One of those is Stealth Rock, which is super useful as an entry hazard, but the attacking moves Rock Slide and Stone Edge are strong enough, but the accuracy issues infuriate me. Also, the Rock type isn't officially endorsed by Dwayne Johnson, so, like, what's even the point? If you were ever underwhelmed by the Rock type's lack of... stuff, then say hello to the Normal type! In terms of sheer amount, the normal type is number one. It's got by far the most moves, and the second most Pokemon only behind the water type. Sounds pretty good, right? But here's the twist. It sucks. Don't get me wrong, there are uses for normal type Pokemon and moves, but if you look at the big picture, it's ugly. Move-wise, there's a lot of garbage. Just scrolling down the move list, you have to go 11 moves in before you can get to one that can be a consistently useful attack. Also, the normal type has claim of both moves that will make a Pokemon kill itself, which are apparently categorized as beautiful, so make of that what you will. Normal type Pokemon tend to be a bit boring to me in terms of design and battle, but the normal type does have Wooloo. <laughs> y you know what? Fuck it. Normal type is number one. Wow. Ice type at number 16? That's pretty cold. I'm not sorry. Looking at the ice type, it's actually a pretty solid type. There aren't too many Pokemon or moves in the ice type, but what it lacks in the amount, it makes up for with quality. The moveset is fairly balanced with a good mix of special and physical moves, as well as a weather effect move in hail that allows for some interesting strategy. Stat-wise, nothing will blow you away, but there's some good balance and the Pokemon are pretty cool. That was not intended to be a pun, it just came out that way. I'm still not sorry. But seriously, this is a solid group, and it got a boost in Galar with Ice Q and Frostmoth. The only real reason I have to put this type so low is because I rarely use Ice types. Like, as in they are my least used type in the whole series. They aren't readily available until the end of the game a lot of the time, and even then, the lack of Ice type Pokemon makes them hard to find anyways. It's my own lack of experience that makes me have to put the Ice types lower on the list. Get ready to get spooked, because the number 15 spot belongs to the Ghost type! The Ghost type is one of the more unique types in all of Pokémon. It's about deception, confusion, and just generally being an asshole. Looking over the Ghost type's move list, you'll notice that a significant portion of them are status moves. Causing status ailments, and more importantly, taking advantage of said status ailments, are the name of the game for the Ghost type. Ghost types will confuse you until you start beating the hell out of yourself. Because fuck you. They will haunt your dreams, making you unable to sleep soundly. Because fuck you. They will even drag you to the underworld once you defeat them. Because fuck you. This can certainly be claimed as strategy, but in my eyes it's more like testing my patience. In terms of actual Pokemon, they have some pretty dumb concepts, like putting a ghost in a teapot. Never seen that before. But the execution is great, especially with their design. Ghost Pokemon look cool as hell. I just hate battling them, and I'd prefer blowing away my competition with brute force like the simpleton that I am, rather than using those pesky tactics.
This was a tough one to put so low in the rankings, but when I thought about it, there wasn't anything about the grass type that really stood out to me in a positive way. Sure, there are some cool Pokemon, and the move list is pretty strong, but it tends to be pretty inconsistent stat-wise, and it might have the worst type advantages in the games. It's weak to 5 types and strong against 3. Sounds okay, right? It's also resisted by 7 out of the 18 types, the most of any type tied with Bug. So, nearly half of the time, the grass type cannot effectively damage an opponent's Pokemon. Also, as a starting type, it's vastly inferior to its sibling types in Fire and Water. So I felt like I needed to be more hard on it, since you always have the option to use it right from the beginning of your Pokemon journey. I will give credit to its move list though. There is a ton of variety, strong special attacks, status moves, strategy, it's good stuff. And lastly, as a personal note, I find the premise of grass type attacks hilarious. Like other types make sense. You don't like something, punch it or set it on fire or something. But grass type? You wanna fight something? Throw a leaf at it. All right, all right, I get it, jeez. At number 13, the poison type asks you an important question. Do you like the color purple? Because holy shit, that's a lot of purple. The poison type is just a type I never really think about as a primary type. And the poison type tends to think the same way since half of the Pokemon that use poison use it as a secondary type. Now I actually tend to really like the poison type. I think it has a lot of great qualities as a supporting type. It's pretty resistant, so adding it onto an existing Pokemon can give it an extra resistance or a double resistance, and its moveset is perfect for support. There aren't a ton of heavy hitting moves, but there are a lot of ways to utilize its moveset to set up the poison status ailment. So there's certainly a lot of good here, but the poison type's lack of effectiveness without the benefit of other types helping it moves it down the list for me, as well as the fact that it's only super effective against grass and fairy, with both of those having much better options of disposal. Plus, if I really want something toxic, I can just go look at Smash Bros Twitter. The fairy type is the most recent addition to the type tree, but it feels like it's been around since the beginning. I feel like they did a fantastic job integrating the fairy type since its debut in Gen 6. It was originally added to be a counter to the pesky dragon type, but it can certainly stand on its own. The fairy type has been added on to certain Pokemon, and for the most part, I've really liked what that has done to make certain Pokemon more unique and viable, like with Togetic, Clefable, and especially Azumarill. Seriously, huge power, play rough, excellent. The fairy type's move list isn't much yet, but it sets up well to become an extremely balanced type, as they have already shown a willingness to use it both as a physical and special type, and the new additions in Gen 8 have pushed that even further. I honestly believe the fairy type will only continue to get better, but as it stands now, I'm just waiting to see a little bit more from this type. The flying type is what happens when you want to stick a type onto a Pokemon that doesn't have a second type yet. Like, I need somebody to explain to me how someone looked at Gyarados, Scyther, Tropius, and Mantine and said, hmm. Well, those look like flying types to me. I'd include that Ultra Beast in that discussion too, but quite frankly, those things are barely Pokemon anyways. <laughs> like, what's even the point, you know? The Flying type is another type that doesn't particularly excel at anything. It tends to produce good speed, but its defenses are very undesirable, and its attack and special attack are just okay. But its moveset has a lot of variety that allows the players to run Flying type Pokemon in many different ways. And it beats out some of the other types simply because it used to be a necessity to have a Flying type on your team. Fly as an HM required you to have a flying type, and that's why I will always have a soft spot for flying Pokemon. Dragon type? More like dragon these nuts on your mom's chin. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know if I can use that. The dragon type has a similarity to the ice type, being mostly unavailable until nearly the end of any given Pokemon journey. Only this time, they take longer to train and evolve, and there are even less of them. Sounds like a lose-lose, but the Dragon type is one of the strongest, if not the strongest Pokemon type in the entire series. The introduction of Fairy type kind of checks the Dragon type, but it's still an absolute powerhouse. It's only super effective against one type, being itself, which is strange, but the Dragon type has no need for those silly type advantages. It's got the highest average base stats of any type, and the moves Dragon types can learn are extremely powerful. And honestly, I can't think of a single dragon type Pokemon that I can categorize as bad. Even that one. Most of them have badass designs, are extremely powerful, and are often the centerpieces of some of the best NPC battles in the entire series. Once again, another type I really like, but the fact that they are so difficult to obtain and train moves them down the list for me.
Hell yes, I just put Bug over Dragon. And hell no, I'm not ashamed of it. Okay, maybe a little bit. The Bug type should be lower on this list. I get that, but I have a huge soft spot for Bug type Pokemon. And as cliche as it is, it's because of Butterfree in the anime. And I'm still bugged by Ash for releasing it, which is why I always try to use a Bug type Pokemon in my playthroughs. Bug types have the lowest base stats on average and are resisted by seven types. I have very little I can say to justify it being this high on the list. I just like it, okay? However, having said all that, the bug type is still a useful type if you know how to use them. I'm not saying I do, but someone probably does. The low base stat total is slightly skewed because of some of those early evolvers in the group, so there are plenty of great bug type Pokemon out there. And there has been an especially big bug boost since Gen 5 introduced Scolipede, Levani, and Volcarona. That's all I really have to say. I love bug types and so should you, damn it! The Dark type has gone underappreciated for decades, but it finally got representation in the Pokemon Gym Challenge in Generation 8! And it was underwhelming! So I need to give the Dark type even more praise so people understand how epic it can be. The Dark type is fairly balanced overall with a slight boost in attack, but what I really like about it is that the Dark type tends to make everything better. Any Pokemon that has access to the Dark type will see an improvement in its stats and moveset. It's a complete win-win situation, as long as you make sure they don't get punched. My favorite aspect of this type though is that it's immune to Psychic. The Psychic type is one of those extremely powerful types and is probably the best special attacking type in the game. And it needs the Dark type as a check to stay balanced. Lastly, just look at some of these designs. They are always so mysterious and cool and they really speak to my edgy 14 year old side. The ground type is just the rock type, except that it has better moves, better Pokemon, better stats, better designs, and better matchups. But you know, besides those things, they're pretty much the same. The ground type has great type advantages, including an immunity to electric type attacks. It's also the only type to be super effective against the electric type, so it gets bonus points for that. The ground type is here to do one thing, and that's to bully you until you go home crying because you can't stand up for yourself. You little shit. Its moveset is mostly strong physical attacks, and it does its job well. I really don't have that much negative to say about the ground type besides its below average special defense, but even then it's not terrible. The ground type is just the epitome of solid. Hey, can you guys feel that heat? No, no, it's not my mixtape. Available on iTunes, Spotify, and Lo-Fi Hip Hop Radio to relax and study too. It's actually the fire type. The fire type is the second starter type on the list, and unsurprisingly, it's really fucking good. Its stats are pretty ridiculous for a type that has a huge amount of Pokemon, which gives you a ton of variety. You've got fast Pokemon, strong Pokemon, bulky Pokemon, and not many, bad Pokemon. The fire type also has a pretty great moveset full of powerful attacks, which can all leave the target with a burn. Not only that, these moves have some of the most epic names ever. Blast Burn. Eruption. Incinerate. And my personal favorite, Mind Blown. <laughs> but most importantly, the fire type has been consistently great ever since it was introduced all the way back in Gen 1, and each generation has only made it stronger. So, remember to buy a burn heal the next time you challenge a fire type. Hey, remember in Gen 1 when the Psychic type was really strong because the special stats were combined and it had no weaknesses? Bug doesn't count. And the Dark type didn't exist? That was pretty cool. But now they ruined it. Gen 1 for life! Nah, but really, the Psychic type is actually pretty damn good. I personally love the Psychic type's moveset a lot. It has a lot of status moves, but what I like about the Psychic type is that you don't have to rely on them. There are a ton of strong Psychic type attacking moves and Psychic type Pokemon, so it gives you the option to use status moves, but you don't have to. And like the Fire type, the Psychic type is another type that has been consistent throughout Pokemon's lifetime. Each new installment in the series has also brought some new, incredible Psychic types. And if we're talking legendaries, then we're talking Psychic types, as there are an ass load of Psychic type legendaries. Also, there's a Psychic type move from Gen 7 called Light That Burns The Sky, which sounds like a fucking anime attack. And that's epic. Ah yeah, it's the fighting type. I mentioned before that I'm a simple man. When I have a problem, I don't logically deduce what the best possible solution would be. 
I punch it. Bad grade on an essay? Punch. Annoying coworker? Punch. Crippling debt accumulated from buying too many Sonic the Hedgehog figurines? Punch that shit. These politicians think games like Call of Duty and Halo cause real life violence. No, 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 no. It's actually Fortnite, but I digress. The fighting type does one thing, attacks. And that's totally fine, you know, do what you do well. Like the normal type, the fighting type's moveset is interchangeable between types, meaning that many types of Pokemon can learn fighting type moves. I love that versatility, and it's what makes this type so great to me. It may be simple, but it can do so much because of how far it can reach. And that's really it. I mean, how many different ways can I talk about punching and kicking? Taijutsu! <laughs> Naruto reference. And coming in at number three, it's my favorite starter type, water. Now before you all say anything, yes, the fire type is objectively better in almost every way. But the move water sport cuts fire types damage in half. So what now, haters? I like the water type because I always use a water type on my team in some capacity. It's not the best type in offense or defense, but the move set allows for a lot of customization. It's got basically everything. It's got physical attacks. It's got special attacks. It's got a priority move. It's got a move that doesn't miss. It's even got a weather effect move. Make it rain, bitches! Also, the water type has the most Pokemon of any type. That doesn't really mean much because there are a ton of awful, useless, disgusting creatures in that list. But there are also a ton of solid choices in the water type. Overall, the water type is always a welcome addition to my team, especially Stunfisk. What? Stunfisk isn't a water type, but it's a fucking fit. At number two, the steel type has all of the usual qualities that I find annoying in a type. These Pokemon are rare and hard to find, the moveset is small, and they take a long time to train. But for the steel type, I will disregard my first world problems and train them anyway. Why? Because the steel type refuses to take damage. Look at these stats. Anything catch your eye? Yeah, its physical defenses are ridiculous, but that's not the reason why the Steel type is so great. The real reason are those resistances. If you ever needed a type of Pokemon to just take some hits, put in a Steel type because it resists over half of all types. Even among the types it's weak against, two of them, ground and fighting, are mostly physical types. And I'll remind you of that physical defense from earlier. Want to whittle a Steel type down with Toxic? Steel is immune to poison. The Steel type has a small but incredible list of Pokemon. And yes, the moveset leaves something to be desired, but the Steel type's positives far outweigh that tiny little negative. What's up guys, and welcome to a brand new segment I like to call giving my friend moves and letting him guess if it's good against the Steel type. Uh, today I'm joined by my friend Parks, or as I like to call him, gay. <laughs> so I've selected 10 different Pokemon moves and I'm going to ask my friend Parks here if any of them are effective against the Steel type. I think that's kind of self-explanatory. So Parks, how would you describe your uh, Pokemon knowledge? Please answer clearly into the microphone. Great. <laughs> so I've picked, I have a list of 10 moves um, and I'm gonna give you all of them at once and then you can take like a 30, 30 seconds probably to figure out which ones are, would be effective against steel types. So we have Signal Beam, Draco Meteor, Moon Blast, Acrobatics, Solar Blade, Blizzard, Skull Bash, Photon Geyser, <laughs> Head Smash, and Sludge Bomb. So you can, uh, you can take the list if you want and we'll give you uh, about 30 seconds here and then you can I'll ask you which ones you, whatever. Time's up. Okay, first I'm gonna ask you how many that you picked, and then second, I'm going to ask you which ones you picked and why. So how many did you pick? I picked one. One. One, okay, <laughs> which, which, one, which one did you choose and why? Photon Geyser. And why was that? Because it's Photon Geyser, and I don't know what that means. Okay, uh, the answer was zero. <laughs> zero? None really? Of, none of them <laughs> None of them are effective against the Steel type. You have been duped, you have been bamboozled, you have been speckledorfed, okay. as said in SpongeBob. 
So because my stupid, idiotic guest here couldn't get the correct answer, I'm gonna have to do another segment with celebrity guest Normie Barry. So make sure to join us next time on whatever the fuck I decided to call this. See ya! Is that a Wii remote? It was only ever going to be electric type. If you've watched me stream Pokemon before, then you know that I absolutely adore the electric type, and it's been that way since I was born. It's true. Even my first word was Thundershock. The electric type holds a special place in my heart, as it's the type of my favorite Pokemon in Luxray. On top of that, the electric type can do a little bit of everything. It's got speed, it's got power, and it's got a status ailment paralysis which every electric type move has a chance of inducing in a target. There's a move whose power is based on speed. There's a move that lets you switch out after using it. And there's a move called Buzzy Buzz. And that's hilarious. But most of all, a lot of my favorite Pokemon are electric types. I already mentioned Luxray, but there's also Pokemon like Jolteon, Ampharos, Galvantula, Electross. There's honestly too many to choose from. And Pikachu, the mascot of the entire franchise is, you guessed it, electric type. So yeah, I think that makes it pretty clear. Did you agree with my rankings? I doubt it! Please let me know how much of a butthead you think I am and leave your own list in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Uh, today I'm joined by my friend Parks, or as I like to call him, Gay. <laughs> <laughs> please! Okay, please. Can you please put that joke I'm, in? I'm leaving that. That was pretty funny. <laughs>